prefibrotic uh, primary myelofibrosis is what I talked about at the main session at SOHO this year. Uh, prefibrotic uh, is actually a relatively recent um, entrant to the field of MPNs. Uh, it was a provisional category in the WHO classification from 2008 and then, and then became official, an official entity in 2016. So essentially what it is, is that uh, the patients with prefibrotic primary myelofibrosis have really been uh, carved out of uh, the patients that were previously considered to have ET. So this is, um, uh, it's really not a new uh, 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 disease in that sense uh, that it's been around, it's just been recognized uh, more recently as a, uh, as a subgroup that actually does worse than ET. So the um, survival, the uh, rates of transformation to AML and overt myelofibrosis are all significantly worse than they are in patients with ET. I like to think of it as a continuum uh, with uh, ET at one end of the spectrum being uh, you know, the least aggressive and then prefibrotic somewhere in the middle and then overt uh, primary myelofibrosis uh, clearly the most um, uh, advanced of these, of these uh, conditions. Uh, so generally speaking prefibrotic primary myelofibrosis is still managed like ET which is to say that the um, thrombosis risk is something we focus on in a major way as well as bleeding risk. There's some data, for example, that bleeding risk is higher in prefibrotic PMF than in ET. The thrombosis risk may be about the same. Uh, we risk stratify patients uh, like we do for ET, but one uh, um, uh, distinction is that the uh, IPSET, uh, the IPSET thrombosis risk model works in prefibrotic PMF, not as much the revised IPSET uh, model. The the revised Ipsed model is pretty much now has been embraced for ET, but it's just important to note that it may not be as validated in prefibrotic PMF, whereas the original Ipsed thrombosis model has been validated in prefibrotic uh, primary myelofibrosis. Uh, the IPSS can be used to prognosticate. Um, it works fairly well, although not as well in discriminating the intermediate ones from the intermediate twos. Um, and again, in the flavor of uh, prefibrotic being a less advanced form of the condition, you know, you're generally going to see patients with lower risk IPSS disease featured prominently here. You're going to see less of the bad mutations or high molecular risk mutations. So just something that is a bit prodromal. It's not quite as advanced as, as uh, 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 you know, overt primary myelofibrosis. Which brings us to the question of intervening early. So right now, the paradigm is still you know to primarily treat based on clinical need but there is emerging data for example for ruxolitinib in earlier stages of, uh, of uh, myelofibrosis in general that's not to say that it's been studied specifically in prefibrotic because it hasn't but there's a lot of data now emerging that earlier use of ruxolitinib in uh, you know before the disease gets uh, that advanced uh, uh, can have significant benefits and lower toxicities finally there's also interest in interferon. Uh, you know, now we have a new interferon, Ropeg interferon alpha 2b that's approved for polycythemia vera, but th there's been a lot of re-emergence in interest in interferons and there's some good data that perhaps the disease modifying potential of interferons is best utilized in earlier forms of the disease before it gets too advanced. So obviously, uh, you know, early uh, PMF or specifically prefibrotic may represent, represent avenues for intervening with interferon.